Hi, good morning, students. A warm welcome. Let us continue the lesson, the best Christmas present in the world. In the earlier class, we completed the part one. Let me give up a brief sum up of the lesson. Narrator bought a, a roll top desk, and then he started working on it in his garage, and he found an envelope. He unfolded it, and then it was written there on the top. December 26, 1942, dearest Kani. Now let us come to the part two of the lesson. All of you turn your textbooks to page number ten. Ready? Now, please follow me. Dearest Kani, I write to you in a much happier frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened that I must tell you about at once. We were all standing too in our trenches as the morning. That is Christmas morning. Here the meaning standing to in the sense taking up positions and trenches, long deep ditches in the ground where soldiers hide from the enemy. Both the meanings are given to the right column of the textbook in the page number eleven. It was crisp and quite all about as beautiful a morning as I have ever seen, as cold and frosty. As a Christmas morning should be. Jim Macpherson, an officer in England troop, he is writing a letter to his wife, dearest wife, Mrs. Jim Macpherson, saying that it is a very happier frame of mind, means fresh mind, because something wonderful has just happened. Something wonderful thing happened, where it seems, when they were all standing at our trenches. Standing in the positions where to face the enemy camp, and how is the climate? Cold and frosty, crisp and quiet, as regular Christmas morning. Now come to the second paragraph in the page number eleven. I should like to be able to tell you that we began it. I should like to able to tell you that we began it. What they began? But the truth, I am ashamed to say. Is that friends began it? Actually, I am saying that I began it. But really, whose turn it is? Fred's turn it seems. Okay, who was now in this paragraph? Who was talking to us? I refers to Jim Macpherson. Who is he? An officer in England's troop or Britain troop, we can say. What's going on there? They were calling it seems, what they were calling a uh, Fritz, means a, a German soldier. He was waving from trenches opposite with the white flag it seems, and he was calling Happy Christmas, Tommy! Happy Christmas! When we had got or the surprise, some of them shouted back. Oh, they were all stuck with the surprise. Enemies wishing us. Oh, how come it is? How it is possible? But from that shock, suddenly they came out, and they too started wishing them a sims. Same to you, friends. Same to you. I thought that would be that. We all did. That is the res response. That is the answer we have to give. When they wished us, we have to wish. So they all did it sims. But then suddenly one of them was up. Suddenly, what happened? One of them was up. And there in his grey great coat and waving a white flag. What symbolizes the white flag? For peace. Don't shoot, lads! Someone shouted, and no one did. Then there were another fridge upon the parapet, and another. So keep your hands down. I told the men. It is a trick, but it wasn't. Jim mistook something is being to happen, but it is not in a negative manner. It is completely positive, and with also with the white flag, peace. One of the Germans was waving a bottle above his head. It is Christmas Day, Tommy. We have snaps. We have sausage. We meet you. Yes. By this time, there were dozens of them walking towards us across no man's land. What is a no man's land? No man's land is nothing but where a disputed ground between the front lines of trenches of two opposing armies. That land is called as no man's land. That's it. The people are coming from the no man's land, 
and not a rifle between them, no rifle. First of all, here, Private Morris by name, he came first. Come on boys, what are we waiting for? And then there was no stopping them. Both sides they were enjoying, they are moving there. As an officer here, Jim, he can stop them immediately there and then itself. But I have to stop that sense also he didn't get to his mind. Why I should let them? We want peace. All along their line and ours, I could see men walking slowly towards one another. Men walking towards one another, it seems. How it is here? Grey coats, khaki coats, meeting in the middle. And I was one of them. Who? The officer, Jim. I was part of this. He was the part and parcel of the situation going on. In the middle of the war, we were making peace. In the middle of the war, they were making peace. What made them to make peace? The Christmas morning, wishing both ends. Come to the next passage. You cannot imagine, dearest Connie, my feelings as I looked into the eyes of the fridge officer who approached me, how hand outstretched. Hans Wolf, he said, gripping my hand warmly and holding it. I am from Dusseldorf. I play the cello in orchestra. Happy Christmas. How he said it seems. Here he was sharing. Jim was sharing to Mrs. Jim. My dear Mrs. You cannot imagine. Dearest Connie. What is her name? Dearest Connie. My feelings as I looked into the eyes of the Frizz officer. When I looked to that officer. What is his name? Hans Wolf. Who approached me. Hands outstretched. And what he said? Gripping my hand warmly and holding it. And then he was saying, I am from Dusseldorf. I play the cello. What is the cello here? A musical instrument like a large violin in the orchestra. Happy Christmas. Turn the page to 12, the next page. Captain Jim McPherson, I replied. And a happy Christmas to you too. I'm a school teacher from Dorset in the west of England. What he said. Then our hero Jim also got introduced. What he said. Captain Jim McPherson. And he replied that. Happy Christmas to you. I'm a school teacher from Dorset in the west of England. Huh? Dorset? He smiled. I know this place. I know it very well. We shared my rum ration and his excellent sausage. And we talked. Connie, how we talked. He spoke almost perfect English. But it turned out that he had never set foot in Dorset, never even been to England. He had learned all he knew of England from school and from reading books in English. His favorite writer was Thomas Hardy. His favorite book, Far From Madding Cow. So what happened here, dear children? Both of them got introduced and he said, Ha huh, Dawes said, who said? Hans Wolf. What he said? Yeah, you belong to the police of uh, uh, West of England, isn't it? You worked as a teacher in Dorset. I know that place very well. Both of them started chatting there. We shared my rum ration and his excellent sausage. Both of them having a small ring. And we talked, Connie, and how we talked. Several things they shared. Several things they shared, it seems. And while talking here, he observed. Who observed? Jim McPherson has observed that. How Hans Forf is talking. He spoke almost perfect English. But it turned out that he had never set foot in Dorset. He didn't come to Dorset. But he was sound in English. And then he had learned all that from school and from reading books in English. And what he said? His favorite writer is Thomas Hardy. And his favorite book was far from the madding crowd. So out there in no man's land we talked of Bathsheba, Gabriel Oak, Sergeant Troy. What are all these? 
Bathsheba is a beautiful young woman. Beautiful young woman in the novel. What is the novel name? Just now I said, Far From the Madding Crowd, written by Thomas Hardy, which was very much liked by Hans Wolf. Who is he? A German officer. To whom he was interacting to? To Britain officer Jim Macpherson. So, both of them are sharing what they are saying, the characters in the novel. Bathsheba, Gabriel Oak. Gabriel Oak was a farmer. And Sergeant Troy. And Dorset, the place there it, where the author has quoted the writer. He had a wife and one son who had Hans Wolf had a wife and blessed with one son just born six months ago it seems. As I looked about me, there were huddles of khaki and grey everywhere. Everywhere. Two countries, German and England, both of them, they are enjoying there. They are talking, they are drinking, laughing, eating, what not, smoking, everything. Hans Wolf and I shared what was left of your wonderful Christmas cake, Connie. He thought the mazapa was the best he had ever tasted. I agreed. Mazapain means a sweet covering on a cake made from sugar, eggs and almonds. It is there to the left corner of your textbook in the middle. So here, what are the soldiers are doing? Both were mixed. England, German soldiers, they were mixed. And they were smoking, laughing, talking, drinking, what not, eating, everything there going on. There are celebrations. They are celebrating there, full of celebrations. So Hans Wolf and I shared what was left of your wonderful Christmas cake. Wonderful Christmas, your Christmas cake in the sense, in which way you'll prepare. A wonderful Christmas cake you are, you have a nerve in preparing that. In such a manner that is only left over, we shared both of them. Both the officers have shared it and tasted it. We thought everything, we discussed everything, we agreed about everything. With whom he was agreeing? Both the opponents. He was my enemy. There never was a Christmas party like it, Kani. Never we had a Christmas party with an enemy like this. How wonderful, how great it is. Children, you understood now? Uh, we can continue in the next class tomorrow. That's all for today. Bye.